picked up something here if you haven't haven't quite figured that out yet. Uh, a little while back, uh, Keith Rucker managed to find the correct uh, dividing head for his mill, so of course right away I asked him what he planned on doing with his old brown shark universal head here, because uh, I've of course got a brown shark universal mill. And uh, anyway, long story short, we made an arrangement and here's all the parts to it. And it works really good, just like it ought to, once I of course figured out what I was doing. There's one screw missing up here. Uh, yeah, it's back here on this side. Uh, I already knew about that. And the direct in indexing plate, that's a, uh, that's missing. In fact, I've got this out of, out of sync here somehow. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, so if anybody knows where the direct indexing plate would be for one of these, or uh, even you know a good drawing of one, uh, I should be able to produce one with this tool, so I really need to get one of those. He had uh, all three plates that come with it. I'll have to check the paperwork, but I think there was a, like a expanded set of discs you could buy that would allow you to do a larger number of uh, divisions. I, I don't know if I'll need that or not, but I mean, uh, on the hunt for it. Got all three of them plates. There's one on it, of course. Tail stock, and this is the one that he, he did a whole video uh, building this uh, riser plate. And um, everything seems to work pretty good, except that, uh, you know, being the machinist that he is, he made this uh, fit the slot in his mill perfectly. And I think he's got just a little bit wider slot that'll start in there. But um, I want to say he probably cut this with a with an end mill. I'll have to go back and watch the video, but. It starts in there and it goes part way down, but it won't seat all the way. Yeah, I'll probably have to, once I get the handles made up for my mill, I'll have to go in there and I'll take off just a few thousands. So it can't be hardly nothing to get that to go back in. Uh, yeah, the funny story is he, uh, he had these change gears, which of course go back here onto this. There's a little burr on this, on this key. I need to clean that up, but uh, he forgot to send them in the box, <laughs> so he ended up mailing them to me later. Um, anyway, so he gave me a really good deal on this here. And, uh, anyway, but there's more. Here's some more of the stuff that I got from Keith. Uh, I'm pretty sure all these uh, taper adapters came from him, but I kind of I sorted everything out and I may get this stuff mixed up with something that I already had. But here's a here's a nice end mill. It's ancient 7 16 uh, And it looks to be in pretty good shape. It's, it's not super sharp, but you know, you can always send it out and get it sharpened. Uh, that's non center cutting. It looks like it could hold a pilot. But anyway, that's pretty nice. I mean, what is this? You use that's forty or fifty dollars probably. Uh, Here's another, uh, this is a more, or a, excuse me, a Brown Shark 10 taper, um, I don't know what you would call that. It's kind of like a shell mill, I guess, but it's all one one thing on the shank here. What size is this? It's, it doesn't say here. Let's see, we got rulers there. What about the scale? That is, uh, Two and five eighths. Well, oh, that's a pretty good size thing. And there's another one very similar. It doesn't say the size on there, but that's all right. And this one is uh, same size, so two of them matched. That's that's handy. And they got the center, so I'll be able to use overarm support on this, which uh, this kind of a a cutter is, you know, this is kind of dicey stuff, you know. You put it in the taper, right? Sure, it locks in. Uh, all it takes is just the right kind of vibration, and it's going to come out. And I don't want to be standing anywhere near that when that happens. So it's, it's good that you got overarm support option here. That one looks good. I, I 
think one of these things had a chip in it, but I don't see it right now. No, I think we're good, unless it was this one. I know I have one with a chip in it. But uh, anyway, here's a here's a dead center, and I don't know if you're you're watching this, Keith, but I'm not sure what this little stub. It's not threaded. It's just got a center in there. I'm not sure what that's about. What would that would be for? Or why they left it on there? But it's in pretty good, pretty good condition. All these, these here are definitely brown and char made. I think this one is also. No, this is Cleveland. Yeah, probably Cleveland Twister, I guess. Polish stuff, American made. Uh, here's an adapter. And I believe these are all, they're all brown and sharp 10 to something, you know. Uh, I would have to start experimenting around here with some of these. I'm not sure what what they all are. And I remember he said that one of them is labeled wrong. This one says brown and sharp 9 to MT4. That sure looks an awful lot like that brown and sharp 10 right there. So that's probably not right. And this one here, I think... I think I might have already had this one. It says brown sharp 10, Nody, and it's brown sharp 7. It could be a brown sharp 7, I guess. But I tell you what, that is definitely not brown sharp 9 in there. Anyway, here's another one here. Montgomery and Company. one stamped on the tang brown chirp 7 mt4 well it sure looks like a 10 to me so that's probably not right and that sure ain't an mt4 I don't, maybe it's a brown chirp 10 to brown chirp 7 yeah because this says brown chirp 7 this one doesn't have a chamfer they look about the same size to me anyway so all this came in a great big box, all the way from Keith. They they shipped it to YouTube Express. A buddy of him. Oh boy, I can't remember his name. I'll have to look here in a second. His name's Tom. Uh, lives maybe about 60 miles away from me. So he went all the way to Union, Illinois, to the Arnfest, and brought all this back for me. So that was really nice of him. So. I gave him a couple of bottles of wine. Gave him good tips on uh, some of where he can get some of his, his machines fixed. Anyway, but oh wait, there's still more. All right, here's some more stuff that Keith sent. And uh, I was just looking at this one here. This one's got two broken teeth right in the well, they're the alternate ones. So this. This cutter probably, probably no good, but that's all right. No big deal. Um, let's see here. We got this one here, which is how big? Oh, it's about two and a half, five sixteenths, I think, here, or something like that. I think it says right on it, actually. Well, anyway, these are all more or less in the quarter inch kind of range. Is that one? That one I think is a three eighths. Alternate tooth. This one's straight tooth. And I believe these are sort of they're all side milling. Well, yeah, they're all side milling cutters too. I believe this one here. These are supposed to be really good for like cutting keyways. Anyway, is that one? That one. This one here is kind of a special one. What is that? Must be about three inches. Yes. Almost two and seven eighths, but uh, it's it's a, got an angled cut to it. I don't know, fifteen degrees or something, probably more or less. But these kind of cutters are, you know, you wouldn't be using it every day. But uh, there may be a time where maybe I really want to cut, make that cut on something. Here's another one here. Some of these are double keyed too. 
Uh, can barely read. It says Boyer Schultz. It's like engraved right here, very lightly. Might have engraved it and then ground it afterwards. But uh, looks like it was put on there by hand. That's a pretty good size cutter there. That one's uh, three and a, three and a quarter. Yeah, it's three and a quarter. And that one's yeah, thin, less than quarter inch, five, uh, three sixteenths or something probably. Then we got these ones here, and these are profile cutters. They're, they make radiuses, and I want to say that. Whoop, I want to say they're all the same. These ones here, probably a matched pair almost. Anyway, there's three of them. These are all, I think, 7 8 bore. I've got arbors for 7 8 and 1 inch. That one there's really been sharpened a bunch of times huh? in comparison. Look at these. Much meat's left on that versus this. <laughs> anyway. So all this stuff here, this all came to me uh, shipped clear. I mean, Keith is all the way in Georgia, and I'm way out in California. Shipped all the way across the country for less than what I would pay for that dividing head, just alone, much less with all these cutters. So Keith really gave me a pretty sweet deal. But wait, I have more. Okay, so... Sorry, I said his name was Tom. The guy, the guy that brought back all that stuff from uh, uh, Illinois for me was uh, his name is Mike Thomas. Anyway, I guess Keith's known him for quite a while, uh, probably through the Arn Fest, I would imagine. Anyway, uh, I mentioned to him that I had an Atlas lathe and I was, you know, looking for always looking for tooling. So he's kind of an old iron nut too, and he said, you know, I think I have a, a steady rest. And I've been looking for a steady rest for a while. And he had this. And this, I'm almost certain that this is an Atlas steady rest. And it's a 12 inch steady rest. Um, but it's not right for my lathe. Uh, right here, for my lathe, it should almost come down to here. This is way too skinny. So, uh, I may end up. Uh, you know, Mike didn't give me this. Uh, you know, we kind of made an agreement on what, what he wanted for it. I may end up buying it from him. Um, this would be a very easy part to copy. Um, and maybe I'll make a couple of them and sell them on eBay. Uh, as far as the casting, it would be very simple. I'll just have to build up a little bit down here so they could be machined off. And there's, what, three holes there. Three grooves here, three holes here to be tapped, and then these special square head screws. Yeah, it wouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Uh, anyway, so there's that. That's from Mike, real good guy. Uh, he has got some of the nicest uh, old uh, woodworking equipment I've I've seen. He's got a just as monstrous Yale bandsaw. Uh, 40 something inches the throat is uh, I don't remember or, you know the wheels I forget exactly how big but it's big anyway this other stuff here this is some eBay purchases so here's a uh, I got these really cheap I'm not sure why uh, need a little oil on this one I guess huh these are some radius gauges it's a stereo set of gauges and I think this goes up to like 400 thousands or something. Uh, they're not the normal ones you see though for some reason. They're, they're kind of, it's just got the one corner and then I guess an, an inside one on there right here. So normally you have two or three different profiles to read against. And there's, you know, there's a whole stack of them in here. I don't know the, the range exactly. Should go through them and look at them. I need it clean this thing up. It's a little bit gummy. It doesn't move very well. But it is a steric tool, so uh, it's good quality stuff. And then the other day I was looking on there and I, I saw this pin spanner come up and I think with shipping and everything this was maybe like six dollars or something. So that's, that's pretty damn cheap. Yeah, it's not there's no name on it. 
Oh, there's something right here though. Cast in. Probably a part number or something. I'm not sure what this came with, but you know, um, every once in a while you run into fasteners like that, so uh, I'm sure it'll be handy at some point. Anyway, and this here, this was a real, a real find, I think. Any of you guys that got, well, they spared no expense on the on the paper here, did they? So got surface grinders. Here's three five inch sign bar blanks, um, unhardened. I mean, all the prep work's been done, really. It just needs to be finished ground. You gotta drill the holes and put make rolls to go on there. But uh, I think I paid fifteen dollars for this for the set. Them so five dollars a piece for sign bars. Yeah, pretty cheap. And uh, anyway, if somebody wants to finish them off, you know. I'd like one, but you know I'm I'm pretty reasonable on like bartering the other two for you know making up the one for me. If anybody's interested in that deal, let me know. But uh, those are pretty pretty decent shape. It's getting a little bit of surface rust on there, but yeah, it's gonna get ground anyway. But nice lightning holes and all that and everything in there. Well, I should put a little oil on these and then pack them away. Maybe Chuck over in the Bay Area, he's pretty close. Tom Lipton, he's he's pretty close too. I know he's uh he's getting that really super high end grinding machine up and running here probably pretty quick. And he's busy building the baby bullet right now, I think though. And, and of course the wife has got the the uh, etching press, you know. Well, I think hot on the heels of that, so Anyway, I'm in no huge rush here for these. I've got a little three inch one. But anyway, there's one more thing that I've kind of acquired here of late, but uh, I'll save that for a separate video. I actually haven't even brought it home yet, but uh, it'll be a new, a new tool for the shop. And also too, uh, something of interest to you guys, you know, I, I, I kind of work in a large size shoebox, and uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're re refinance the house and take a little bit of money out, and I'm gonna I'm gonna build myself a nice garage here in the back. Uh, I'm still kind of in the planning stages and talking to the city. Uh, that's always fun dealing with the bureaucrats, but um, hopefully here, you know, the next year or so, I should I should get a uh, get my new shop up and running and uh, anyway I'll have some more stuff coming down the line I already know of a couple of things um, you know if there's any kinds of tools that you guys want me to talk about I I have plenty of other stuff too um, uh, woodworking tools and, and of all kinds uh, you know whatever you guys want to learn about I, I have things I could probably tell you about Anyway, I think that's about it for this episode.